What would life be like if we lived more fully alive? You know, and instead of being fragmented by worry and sin and brokenness and fear and, you know, worries all the time in our relationships and ourselves, like, do you ever think like no matter how much self-care we do, I hear it so often from clients, we're doing self-care, we're starting to feel good, but whew, down we go, you know, like uh, arrows coming in, worry and um, bait from our husbands and we just, we just go down and um, that does not allow us to live fully alive. And I was reflecting on like Christ, right? And Christ, he didn't take on, he didn't take on the wounds and the um, feelings of unloved or um, rejected and abandoned, all the things that he experienced fully, but he didn't take it on as his identity. And so he was able to live fully alive. Despite what he knew was coming, he kept going. And I just wondered, like, how could it be if we started to live that way and really embraced love, compassion, and purpose? What might be possible if we infused our roles as wives and mothers with less resentment, less fear, less anger, and more of like a skip, a jump, and a fire of joy in our spirits? You know, what would it look like to be fully alive? You know, I think that we would love more unconditionally. You know, just as Christ did, right? He loved us all and he still does love us all regardless of our sins. Maybe we could love our husbands with more of an open heart and less judgment and harshness. And maybe we could hold our tongues uh, when we want to justify or explain um, and instead let love guide our mouths and our actions and our um, attitudes and our rolling of our eyes, you know, our respect, right? And reminding us that love is patient and it's kind and it's enduring. So even when he lets us down or he criticizes us or snaps at us or the kids and instead of turning away or yelling back, maybe we can pause and invite Jesus in to guide us. And another way to live fully alive, I think, would be to have more humility, to, to allow ourselves to be humble so that we're not in a place of defending or of blaming and looking for him to change, but instead to actually be willing to look at ourselves and what's going on over here and even to be really brave about that and to look within and to be accountable and to make some changes, to learn some specific skills actually that can help us to change how we show up. Um, that is not easy, and yet it's a journey that I have traveled, and it is uh, well worth it, and uh, my clients would tell you the same. Um, what transforms when we transform and become humble, we find that our husbands transform as well. There's a mirroring that's going on there. And then, of course, living more alive would include forgiveness. Forgiveness of ourselves for the errors that, that we humbly become aware of, but also forgiving him and forgiving others maybe who have hurt us in the past that it's those wounds that are causing us to become controlling from whatever happened. Maybe it was our own parents' divorce, uh, but all of that, like starting to forgive because my goodness, right? What, what, what were Jesus's last words, right? Like, Father, forgive them. They know what, not what they do while he hung on that cross dying. So it teaches us the importance and the power of forgiveness. And if we really cultivate that in our marriages and in our families, wow, right? Like what intimacy and connection could be created as we start to reflect Christ's grace and love more deeply. That forgiveness truly is the pathway to freedom, to really creating the life that we really desire, the love that we desire, the connection my clients tell me that all the time. They want better communication. They want that intimacy. They want the connection. They want to, you know, feel like they're like they're like when they got married, and that it's still it's still there. Like they don't want to end up being roommates and distant. And so forgiveness can be a pathway to that. And certainly another way to become more fully alive is to pray together and to turn to Christ to to invite Him in. Because you know, even even Jesus went off and to pray with His Father. And so for us to offer especially prayers of thanksgiving because prayers of thanksgiving when we're focusing on our blessings and gratitude 
again, that shifts our heart. It shifts my heart. It shifts my heart whenever I am focused on my blessings. And when we pray together, that is such a beautiful way to be united. And um, prayer is so life-giving and it heals because it's bringing Jesus in instead of us trying to fix things on our own, which we can't do because you know, God is the divine physician. He's the one that can heal our relationships. He's the one that can heal our broken hearts because it's in him that we really have never been abandoned. We've never been betrayed. We've, you know, he never will do any of that. He will never take his love away from us. Um, he'll never tell us that we're, you know, dirty or um, not worthy. We're always worthy of his love. And yet sometimes we put those um, you know, we stonewall our husbands, but we also stone stonewall and close off our hearts. And when our heart gets hard, then, ugh, right, that's the recipe for disaster in our marriages. So becoming the light is another way of becoming fully alive. That as we share in our journey of healing, um, Christ will shine the light through that stone wall that we've put up and it will pierce it to start to break in for him to penetrate our heart, for him to come in and um, take away our pride and our fear and our anger and our resentments and all those things that just keep us so broken and the unforgiveness. And, and as we let the light in, our sins fall away and, you know, Christ forgives us. We're able to forgive others. We get the freedom and that we bring that light into our homes. We're more fully able to love our children, our kids, our we bring more kindness uh, in our words, our thoughts, our actions, our attitudes, and it ramps up the happiness, the mood, the joy. All of that can start happening so that we're, you know, we're having more giggle fests and we're uh, with the kids and we're playing more and we're more go with the flow instead of planned and controlled, which is always from fear. And so as that light shines, um, there's no more retaliation and, and uh, withholding. But instead, it becomes a place where a greater intimacy can happen. And of course, also living on purpose. So much of our life is lived unintentionally, recreating the past because we're coming from those wounds. But instead, if we can forgive the past, heal those wounds, move forward and have an intention and a vision for what we want to create in life, wow. That's when we can really live fully alive. Like when I started dreaming about living at the lake, I mean, in our little tiny camp here and then living, building a log cabin, all of that um, came from a dream and a willingness to be vulnerable, uh, to open myself up to God's abundance and the blessings that he wants to give us. So when we live on purpose, you know, I have this vision and this deep desire to be able to bring my family back, to bring grandchildren here someday and to be able to, we have one getting married in November and one getting married next year. So the idea of, of healing, even the brokenness in our own family through the years of pain and, and fighting with my husband and I, and, but the more that I heal my heart and I heal the wounds that I'm very aware of have been transfer or transferred from past generations and my mom's generations of divorce and all that happened back there. But being able to heal all that and to see that God doesn't see me or you as broken. He sees us always as whole and he wants to be invited in to be able to just really be able to, to bring forward those future generations of love because I don't want to pass on what I passed on likely to my kids. I have deep sorrow about that. But the more that I can heal me, then the more there's hope in the future. And so when we can live on purpose with a, a mission of creating a legacy of love, that's what I stand for. That's what my work stands for is really healing marriages, healing couples, healing wives. That's is why I work with wives um, because the wife is the heart of the home. When we can transform our men, our men mirror us and there can be healing. And so, um, yeah, more music, right? More gratitude, more love, more fun, all of it can create whatever vision you have of that legacy into the future. It's not about just us. It is about our children and our grandchildren and what we're creating in this world. We do not have to be a part of the craziness that's breaking down families at all. You can stand on purpose that you're not falling for that.
And then another way to live on purpose is really to embrace joy, right? And Jesus is joy. And as we're forgiven and as we grow and heal, oh my gosh, we can reflect Jesus's joy and we can bring that into the world feeling more alive and, um, you know, getting out into nature and really um, being in awe of all the blessings of what God creates, you know, and I've got loons out here that sing all the time and they have a call that they, they, these particular calls, but there's, um, I, I used to know them, but there's one, like when they're missing each other and they can't find each other, maybe they've separated off in the lake somehow. They have a particular call of like, where are you, honey? I'm over here, honey. And they come back to each other, you know? And then there's a distress call because we also have an eagle. And if the eagle is circling or something or there's a harm, they'll have another distress call. But it's so interesting when we can marvel at nature around us, get out there and um, embrace the joy that is all around us and so many blessings you don't keep a gratitude journal, I highly recommend it because, again, that just starts to train your brain to be looking for the good. And then, of course, to, to live fully alive is to be impacting the world because we're impacting the world either way. If we're hurt and broken, we're passing that brokenness on. But if we're also, if we start to um, impact the world by healing and loving and um, dreaming and uh, forgiving, all of that. We again, we're going to be creating that legacy of love and life in a world that is very confused right now. But if we're standing in Christ, there's no confusion. There's only hope for what can be created. What is what our calling is? Because we're called to become like Christ. The more we become like Him, the more that we are love. The more that that can reverberate in the world. And so, as Christians, we are called not to put that basket over and hide our light, but to impact the world. Take the basket off. Go shine the light, and make a difference. Because just as much as there's yuckiness in the world right now, there's still a lot of good. There's a lot of good. And so be that good and send those ripples forward, right? So I just really invite you to strive to be fully alive in the footsteps of Christ and let his love guide you. Let his call to become like him guide you. The next time that your husband throws some bait with a nasty comment or a little criticism, uh, that instead you can have self-control and maybe not respond and um, or Maybe just have a different thought of perhaps he's had a really bad day and I'm going to give him grace and uh, right. And so that you can be empowered in how you show up as a wife that can make a huge difference in how everything unfolds as you create a safe space, right? We want to create a safe space for everybody to be their best self. And it starts in that humility and all. So it is why I work with wives um, and with working with wives, we can completely transform our homes. So if you're not in the Happy Wife community on Facebook, come and join us. If you want to check out um, my website, it, it is um, createmyhappymarriage.com. And I do offer free relationship assessment calls so that if you want to explore working together and how I might be able to help you to live more fully alive, reach out. I would be happy to talk with you. And be sure to like, subscribe, do all the things here on YouTube. Um, I thank you so much because you know what? Life is just too darn short. It is too darn short. So don't waste another day. I'm standing for you. I'm Coach Carol. God bless.